Hi everybody! Hello my fellow Americans! I'm Vance Dice, and I'm George H.W. Bush, the 41st President of the United States of America. What I have here are some Bible study notes that we have received when going to a Bible study at an Episcopal church in Kissimmee, Florida. And, you know, these these Bible study notes, I feel that they have a lot of words of wisdom that I feel like we really need to share them with you, especially in this day and age. Mm-hmm. So, let's see. Why does God allow suffering? Why does God allow the innocent to suffer? Hmm. That's an interesting question. As C.S. Lewis wrote, pain insists upon being attended to. God whispers to us in our pleasures, speaks in our consciences, but shouts in our pains. It is his megaphone to rouse a deaf world. Suffering is a result of breaking humankind's relationship with God. Free choice. Fallen world. Forces of evil. Suffering from our choices due to our own sin. Suffering due to the sins of others. Suffering because of humankind's rebellion and the fall of creation. Suffering points us to the existence of God from Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis. My argument against God was that the universe seemed so cruel and unjust. But how had I got this idea of just and unjust? A man does not call a line crooked unless he has some idea of a straight line. What was I comparing this universe with when I called it unjust? God has put in us the desire to reflect his loving nature and calls us to love one another so our souls are moved by injustice. Makes logical sense to me. Satan tempted Eve, and then Adam, with having the power to be like God. This brought about death and suffering into the world. The free will freedom God gave us allows us to be under God's authority, or our own authority, and death and suffering in the world force us to make a choice. Revelation tells us that God will make all things new, and justice will prevail in the end. But for now, we have to choose to live in a fallen world, either with God, who loves us, or without Him. God allows us to experience the consequence of our choices. We may suffer because God allows it, but it is always meant to provide correction and draw us back to him. I agree with that. God himself knows what it's like to feel pain, to suffer, from Adam and Eve rebelling against him, to his people rejecting his salvation in Jesus, to the physical agony on the cross. He promises to be with us in our time of trials, and is consistent with his desire to draw us to himself and be in relationship with him. Mm-hmm. Amen. Therefore, it was always necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away sin, the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 17 to 18. I have said these things to you, that in me you may have peace. In the world you, you will have tribulation. But take heart, I have overcome the world. John chapter 16, verse 33. And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous, and his ear toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted, and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the, affl the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Psalm 34, verse 15 to 19. Our human nature naturally equates bad behavior with punishment and good behavior with blessings. But Jesus taught this is not always so. See the man born blind in John chapter 9 verse 1 to 7, and that the glory of God may be revealed. 
or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Luke chapter 13, verse 4 to 5. Not all sin is personal sin, but scripture tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. And that all must repent. We don't always understand our times of suffering, but God, but God can and does redeem suffering. First, God uses pain and suffering to draw us to himself so that we will live relying on him in a relationship and allows God to show his faithfulness and his love for us. Second, overcoming trials builds our faith, which God then uses in sharing the comfort we have received to comfort one another. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 4. And third, suffering reminds us that as believers we are not of this world and moves us to the hope of heaven. That this world and all that is in it will pass away, but the kingdom of God is eternal. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. James chapter 1, verse 2 to 5. Does God cause suffering? The scriptures tell us that God's character is loving, compassionate, and merciful. God is perfect. God is so divine and inherently good that sinful human beings cannot stand in his presence. I heard something about that before. In the Old Testament, leaders like Moses had to remove their shoes or veil their faces to be in God's presence because of his holiness. First, 1 John chapter 4, verse 8 tells us that God is love. From this, it appears that for God to inflict suffering on his creation would contradict his fundamental nature. But since we live in a fallen world where sin and evil are prevalent, God allows and uses our trials and suffering to get our attention and draw us back to him. Even if there is no sin associated with our suffering, God can and will use it to deepen our faith. Whatever the reason, we can bring our pains and struggles to God, knowing that he cares for us and will walk with us through the suffering. Yes, he will. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, and he himself tempts no one. But each person is tempted when he is lured and enticed by his own desire. Then desire, when it has conceived, gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. James chapter 1, verse 13 to 17. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him, because he cares for you. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 6 to 7. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I plead with the Lord to take it away from me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 9. So, those were some words of wisdom that we wanted to share with you in regards to suffering in the world and why God allows it. And what does that really mean when, it, when we say that God is a good, merciful God? And, you know, we really hope that you guys have found some very insightful wisdom in those Bible study notes that we have just shared with you. Absolutely. And remember, God is love. God loves you. He loves me. He loves you. He loves Vance. He loves everyone. Because God is love. God is not the cause of suffering. It is our sinful nature and our rebelling against God that actually makes suffering in the world. So always remember that. I'm George H.W. Bush and I approve this message. 
and I'm Van Stikes, and I approve this video. Thank you guys very much for watching, and have a blessed day. May God continue to bless you, and may he also continue to bless America. Amen. Amen indeed. Good night, all.